Okay, uh, dear class 10 students. So I have come again with the continuation of chapter number 4. That is absorption by roots, the processes involved. Alright? Absorption by roots, the processes involved. That is from chapter number 4. I hope you people are following the online classes very seriously. Okay, so chapter number 4 we are in. So in the last class, we discussed about the absorption and conduction of water, mineral, water and minerals and the processes involved for the absorption and conduction of water and minerals were in that particular portion of this chapter, right? And uh, uh, with regard to that, we have already come to know that there were five processes involved, okay? But in the last class, we could not complete all the processes involved in it. We did up to osmosis only, imbibition, diffusion, osmosis. These three processes we did in the last session. All right. So today we will do the remaining two processes involved in the processes. Okay. I mean in the uh, what do you call this uh, absorption and conduction of water and minerals. Two processes. That is. Active transport and torsitity and flaccidity. Active transport and torsitity and flaccidity. Okay, so before going into it, let us talk about osmosis in very broad sense. Not only the, the process we need to know about osmosis that we discussed last time, okay, we, we, which we also try to understand with the help of experiment also. So that is uh, very much you know clear to you, I believe. So now, once the osmosis takes place, okay, suppose the osmosis that we have done last time, you know, like that, okay, so movement of the water molecules, movement of water molecules, okay, movement of water molecules from higher level to lower level, from higher level of the from higher concentration of the water molecules to the lower concentration of the water molecules here this is small this is water molecules i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to you know like this one these bigger ones are solutes some other minerals here these small ones so these small ones are water molecules so in the osmosis, what we discuss is that the movement of water molecules from higher concentration to the lower concentration through the semi-permeable membrane. That's what we discussed last time, which is a, which is an osmosis. All right. Then now after osmosis, then in the osmosis itself, osmosis itself, what happens is that okay, let me rub this too. We'll talk this. We'll talk about it later on. So now we'll talk about osmosis. So when the osmosis takes place, then the osmotic pressure is formed. Osmotic pressure is formed. Osmotic pressure is formed. Now see, osmotic pressure is formed. What is osmotic pressure now? See, when the osmosis takes place like this, okay, through the semi-permeable membrane, when the water molecules move from higher concentration to the lower concentration through the semi-permeable membrane, that time a kind of pressure is formed out here in this region. I mean, in the cell. In the cell, after absorbing the water by the process called osmosis, a pressure is formed here due to that osmosis, which is called osmotic pressure. Okay? And what does this osmotic pressure do out here? This osmotic pressure, you know, when the enough water molecules are there, when no more water molecules, you know, can be adjusted in the cell, that time, that pressure will, you know, nullify the movement of the water molecules further. That means when water molecules are not further needed inside the cell because it's already enough, that time that osmotic pressure stops the flowing of water further inside the cell. So that is osmotic pressure. That's what osmotic pressure. All right. So the pressure built up due to the osmosis to prevent the further flow of water inside the cell is called osmotic pressure okay so that's called you know osmotic pressure and uh, that osmotic pressure is very important also 
because if it doesn't form out there, what may happen is that the unnecessary amount of water may be coming inside, which may not be, you know, something good to the cell. Okay, so that will be very dangerous to the cell inside, so that that pressure will stop the flow of water inside for them. So that is osmotic pressure. Okay, so now uh, that's all about you know osmotic pressure now. So then uh, we are talking about the you know the concentration. Why it is all happening is that the concentration of the solutions between the between the inside of the cell and outside of the cell. Inside the cell and outside the cell. Okay, when the water molecules are more outside, alright, than the than inside, then water molecules will be present from higher concentration to lower because that is from outside to inside through that semi permeable membrane. Okay, so with regard to that, with regard to that, and when we talk about that, what we have to know out there is that the concentration of solution, concentration of solution, okay, concentration of solution, when does the water molecule or when do the water molecules from, move from outside to inside? Sometimes what, what also happens is that water molecules from water molecules move from inside of the cell to outside also. That depends upon the concentration of the molecules of the water. That depends upon the concentration of the solutions there inside the cell and outside the cell. Alright, based on that, we come across a new word out here. We come across a new word out here that is called tonicity. I mean tonicity. 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 Now see. Tonicity. Okay? Tonicity O N I C I T Y. What is tonicity? So tonicity uh, is the relative concentration of the solutions outside the cell and inside the cell. Concentration of the solution. Okay? Where is the uh, the the you know solution concentrated? Whether it's inside or outside. Okay? Where are the water molecules more inside or outside? So that the flow of water has to take this. I told you that by the osmosis water point is that water molecules will move, in, move inside the cell also and outside the cell also. That depends upon the concentration of the solutions. That depends upon the, the, the quantity of the molecules present there, molecules of water present there, outside and inside. Alright, so the relative concentration of the solutions uh, between the between and between the two sides, which are the two sides, inside the cell and outside the cell. Alright? So that concentration, that relative concentration of these solutions inside and outside the cell is called tonicity. That's called what? Tonicity. Alright? Concentration of the solutions outside and inside the cell is called tonicity. Relative concentration I mean. Alright? So based on that again, there are three kinds of solutions uh, can be seen there are three solutions, there are three types of solutions which are see here, which are uh, which are isotonic, okay, isotonic, then hypotonic, and next is your hypertonic. See, okay, there are three kinds of solutions with regard to the tonicity or based on the tonicity of the solution there are three kinds of solutions there solutions there that is isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic so in these three different kinds of solutions the cell behaves differently okay the condition of the cell becomes different in these three different kinds of solutions okay that is isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic let us see now what okay isotonic so isotonic is the uh, is a solution solutions when the concentration of the solution both sides concentration of the solution that means inside the cell and outside the cell when it is same when it is the same when it is equal both sides when the water molecules which are uh, so, uh, solvent out here and the solutes which are minerals out here when these two solids and solvent, water molecules and minerals, outside and inside, are equal when this is when the concentration of these two 
you know, components of the solution both are outside and inside the cell, inside the cell and outside the cell. When it's same, so that particular condition of the solution is called isotonic solution. It's called what? Isotonic solution. So that time, that time, what happens is that, you know, the movement of water molecules will not take place. Okay, the movement of water molecules will not take place through this semi permeable membrane now because it's enough. It's enough. Okay, so the further for the, the movement of water molecules will not take place through this one. So this is called isotonic. Okay, this is called what? Isotonic. Now we see hypotonic. Another one is a hypotonic. Hypotonic solution is the solution when what happens is that the water molecules this side. Water molecules outside the cell are more than the water molecules inside the cell. Now, see, hypotonic, which I have drawn out here is hypotonic. See, the cells, I mean, the diagram which I am trying to tell you, which I am trying to, you know, explain is the hypotonic, you know, is, is indicating the hypotonic, you know, I mean, the cell in the hypotonic uh, solutions. So, where what we find is that the water molecules more than the water molecules inside the cell. See here, these two solids, solids and solvent, these are sol solids, these are solids, S O L U T S solids, and these are solvent, water molecules, solvent, these are water molecules. Okay, in this case, solvent, solvent is more, okay, which means water molecules are more than the water molecules inside the cell. Okay, and what is there is that here? The solids, which are water minerals, are less inside here outside than the what uh, uh, the minerals inside. So here, what happens is that flowing of water takes place from outside to inside. That means from higher concentration of the water molecules to the lower concentration of the water molecules. Okay, through this semi-permeable membrane. So this is you know hypotonic. Is what hypotonic. So hypotonic here, this is called hypotonic. All right, so in hypotonic, uh, last time we talked about the types of you know, osmosis also, endosmosis and exosmosis. So it's a kind of you know, endosmosis. In this case, the endosmosis takes place, endosmosis. So when the solution is hypotonic, when the water molecules are more outside, at that time, water molecules will be flowing from higher level to lower level, from higher concentration to lower concentration, okay? That means from outside to inside, so that, Osmosis is called endosmosis. So this endosmosis takes place during or when the cell is in the hypotonic solution. All right. So when it goes on, when the more water molecules, you know, move inside the cell, what happens is that cell will be very much, you know, uh, uh, you know, it will be distended. Okay, it will be distended. It will be swollen up. Okay, it will be swollen up. So that particular condition, when the cell is swollen up, when the cell is you know strong enough, when the cell is not tight, all right, when the cell wall and cell membranes are closely attached, water, I mean, all the cell contents inside are all you know distended. So that particular condition is called torsity. I mean, that type of cell is called torsity, and the condition is torsity will come across this one afterwards here. Yeah. The fourth one that we discussed afterwards, okay, that uh, electric transport then transit and plasticity there was there. So that will come across this one. That condition, when the water molecules will move, move, move from outside to inside, that makes the cell torsit. And the condition is torsity will come across through that because that is also one of the processes, you know, to make the water molecules come inside, go inside, so that it can be sent out to the places of the plants where it is needed, all right, to the leaves where especially the fruit is manufactured, all right. So this is called hypotonic. Then next is your hypotonic, just opposite to this, exosmosis that we discussed last time, okay, that we discussed last time about exosmosis. So during this hypotonic, that means when the solution is hypotonic, so hypotonic means just opposite to this, when the water molecules Okay, let me draw it once again. Okay, like this. Just opposite to this. When the water molecules are more inside the cell, 
than the water molecules outside this. Okay, when the concentration is different here, see, water molecules are more here inside than the water molecules outside. So that time, as we have discussed last time, the other type of osmosis called exosmosis. That time what happens? Water molecules will be moving back to, through this. That will be moving back. Back up, I mean back. Okay, so this time, see, from inside the cell going outside the cell because the water molecules are many out here or more inside than the outside. So that time water molecules will be moving back through the you know semi permeable membrane or through this cell membrane. Okay, so that condition of the solution where the water molecules are more inside than the outside and the solutes are less inside as you can see here solutes which may be more minerals and all are less than outside. So that time we are talking about only water molecules, not the solutes out here. Okay, water molecules we are talking about. That time the water molecules will be moving out through this semi permeable membrane. So that process called exosmosis will take place when it is in the hypertonic cell. Okay, in the hypertonic solution. In the hypertonic solution. Okay, so that time the condition of the cell becomes different. Because the cell, you know, that time the water molecules are all going inside that time. Usually, what happens is that you know, cell will be shrunken. Okay, cell will be shrunken as I was telling you here. That uh, just opposite to that, it happens like you know, cell wall, you know, like that. Suppose this is the cell wall, this is the cell wall, your cell membrane will come down here, cell membrane will be shrunken, and all the water molecules, I mean, the cell contents will all be shrunken out here. Okay, that will all be shrunken. Whereas in the other case, like in the hypotonic, when the atmosphere is taking place, the cell condition will be like this. Here, yeah. the cell condition will be like this. The cell wall and cell membrane are attached, and the you know this is big vacuum, and all the materials will be here. This is completely distended. When this is in the hypotonic. You know, solution when the endosphere is taking place. Whereas in the case of the hypotonic, the condition of the cell will be like this. Okay, so that's all about the tonicity, which is, which is of three types that is isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. Alright? Then, okay, let me uh, rock this one. I think you are clear with all these things. Please go through it. Uh, book is always, always there. And also go through the video and also simultaneously go through the book also. It is clearly uh, there in the book also given. And I have also tried my best to make you understand. Alright? Now we go to next process. For the for the absorption and conduction of water minerals, next we have we have active transport. Active transport. So active transport here. So here yeah, active transport is another process you know by which the water mineral minerals are absorbed and you know conducted. Okay, see, next is active transport. In this case, unlike here, what happens is that here, uh, you know, the minerals here, in the case of active transport, you know, minerals are adjunct. Minerals are adjunct. Suppose these are, you know, this one, cell only, cell name, as you see here. So, minerals may be less outside. Minerals may be less outside. You know, like that. Minerals may be less outside. Okay, but here minerals will be more sometimes. No, I don't know. Plants are already there. Plants are already there with lot of minerals. Lot of minerals. Plants are already there with lot of minerals. These are minerals. These are minerals. Okay, minerals. So here minerals. Minerals. Minerals includes, you know, uh, minerals like ions, you see, then your magnesium, copper, sulfates, okay, so all those kinds of salts that we have discussed last time also because plants need so many minerals there, okay, uh, potassium, phosphorus, okay, all those things are needed. So they are captured by this process called active transport. See here, when the water mineral, I mean, minerals are already more inside the cell, okay, so that time. 
So looking at this only you can understand that see the concentration of what amalic I mean minerals here yeah, you see the minerals this side inside the cells the inside the cell is more than the outside. But even though what happens is that these minerals are absorbed by the cells present in the root or root hairs. They absorb it. So that time what we understand is that here yeah, the minerals are moving from lower concentration to higher concentration lower concentration okay lower concentration to higher concentration higher concentration which is difficult in fact see the water the, the, the minerals molecules minerals are moving from lower concentration to higher concentration which is difficult so that time what does the root do or what do the root hairs do that time is that root hairs or the root use ATP adenosine triphosphate they make use of this energy so with the help of this energy or at the cost of that energy ATP adenosine triphosphate this mineral molecules which are less outside are absorbed to the place or inside the cell where the minerals are already more okay that means from lower concentration to higher concentration so this particular phenomenon is called active transport where the minerals are absorbed from lower concentration to higher concentration at the expense of you know energy called ATP or with the use of energy called ATP adenosine triphosphate the minerals from lower concentrations are absorbed to the higher concentration so this is called active transport okay so just opposite to this active transport we have got passive transport also passive transport sometimes question comes what is transport uh, you know your know, passive transport or what is the difference between the active transport and passive transport so passive transport is just opposite to the active transport where no energy is needed remember no energy is needed is simply like the diffuser simply like the diffuser moving the you know the minerals from higher level to lower level simply you know where no energy is needed that is called you know your uh, passive transport which is of diffusion itself okay so that's all about active transport and passive transport all right we have next uh, torsidity and flaccidity okay torsidity and flaccidity for the absorption and conduction of water and minerals okay torsidity and flaccidity i told you little bit about this torsidity and flaccidity before when i was explaining about this thing three different kinds of uh, solutions that is isotonic hypotonic and hypotonic now let's talk about you know torsidity now in detail okay what is torsidity so what happens is that usually uh, the cells are getting the water these are always in contact with the water okay you see root, root ears are always in contact with water all right so that times what happens is that you now water molecules will be moving inside water molecules will be moving inside through the semi permeable membrane by the process called osmosis as long as as long as the water molecules both sides are not of the same concentration it goes on i was telling you before okay as long as the water molecules are not enough inside the cell okay the water molecules will be moving inside the cell it will be going on moving inside all right so that times what happens is that you know the cell will be reaching to that stage where further the cell cannot absorb the water more what the problem i'm saying so when it goes on when the absorption process goes on what happens is that the cell reaches to that stage where the cell cannot further absorb the water all right that time the cell is distended okay the cell is you know swollen the cell wall and cell membranes are attached that was it is standard so that particular condition of the cell is called torsidity and that distended cell which is tight that type tight t i g s tight okay this tight nest of the cell 
due to the absorption of water and of insect is called torsigity and the cell is called torsid torsid cell torsid cell okay torsid cell so let me draw it once uh, let me draw the the plant cell out here all right uh, Okay, this is your. Uh, I'm trying to draw a torsic cell. Torsic cell. Cell content also is the cell content. Okay, see ya. When the water molecules uh, keep moving inside, keep moving inside, see ya. The osmotic pressure is there. Then, when the osmosis takes place there inside, the pressure is formed. When pressure is formed, that time that pressure, osmotic pressure, will stop the further inflow of water inside. Because if it is going inside more, what may happen is that this cell may be burst out. Okay, it may be burst out. The cell. Will burst out. All right. So in order to stop that, there is a uh, pressure called an osmotic pressure, which will defend it. All right. See, when the water molecules go inside like this, as I've drawn out here before, also when the water molecules move inside the cell, goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on inside. Okay. Then what happens? That as I've told you, that cell reaches that stage when it cannot further, you know, take the water inside. You know. So that time. What happens is that see, this cell membrane, this I have drawn out here, cell membrane, this cell wall, this cell membrane. We are talking about plant cell. We are talking about plant cell. In the animals, it is different. So in case of plant cell, what happens? You see, the cell membrane is there, which is the second layer, second wall of the, you know, second membrane of the plant cell, outermost in cell wall. So when it is fully absorbing the water, when it has fully absorbed the water molecules there, this. Cell membrane will be completely attached to the cell wall. There is no gap. It is completely attached to this, and that is your cell inside is completely distended, swollen. All right. 
not only that, this is the big vacuum, which is full of cell saps here, yeah, which is full of cell sap. Cell, cell sap means, you know, the solutions which contain water and minerals. Water and minerals, where the water, some water molecules are more. Water molecules are more out here. So this is fully solved because of the complete, because of the, you know, too much absorption of water in it. All right, so that time, what happens is that this cell cell beside beside cell cell there are some of the cell organelles you see mitochondria nucleus some of the cell you know this one cell contains this will start applying the pressure to the wall of this cell okay they will the water content which is inside that is a vacuum whatever it is once you say oh, cell content means everything it comes so all because of the absorption of water, enough absorption of water, the pressure will be built up. So that pressure will start striking the wall of this, you know, wall of this, your cell. Alright? And to equalize it, to counterbalance it, the wall of this cell also, you know, returns the pressure. That will also apply the pressure to the cell content inside. You see here two types of pressures out here. One, the cell content applying the pressure to the wall of the cell. The other pressure is that the pressure of the wall to the, you know, to the center, to the central part of the cell, to the what you call cell content inside. So these two pressures will, you know, counterbalance each other. It will, you know, counterbalance each other so that the cell that time doesn't, you know, burst. It doesn't burst out. Okay, but by any chance, by any chance, the further water is absorbed, you know, this your wall cannot, you know, counterbalance the pressure of this cell content to the wall. Then what happens that, you know, the cell will be burst out. Okay, the cell will burst at that time. Alright, so this condition of the cell, when enough water is taken, it is swollen, it is distended, no more water can be, you know, absorbed now here, there is no place. So that condition of the cell is called torsidity. It's called what? Torsidity. Okay. It's called torsidity and the cell is called torsit cell. Torsit cell. Okay. It is called torsit cell. So when torsidity takes place out here, we can see mainly two types of pressures out here. I have already told you. That is the pressure of this cell content inside to the one of the you know, to the wall of the cell, to the wall of the cell, the pressure of this one to the wall of the cell is called torgor pressure. T U G R O and torgor pressure. That will always, you know, apply the pressure to the wall of the cell. Torgor pressure. And in the meantime, to counterbalance it, I told you, the wall of the cell also applies the pressure to the cell contained inside so that they will counterbalance each other. Otherwise, you know what happens? Cell will be, I have already told you, the cell burst out. It doesn't happen so because there are two pressures, you know, you know, counterbalancing each other. Okay? So that particular condition of the cell is called torsidity. It's called what? Torsidity. Okay? Then, uh, just opposite to this torsidity, we have what? Flaccidity. We have what? Flaccidity. Flaccidity. Placidity. Placidity. Or it is also called uh, placidity, or it is also called plasmolysis. The process is called plasmolysis. Uh, and you can say plasmolysis. Or it is also called placidity. Let me write it in the bracket. Placidity. Placidity. Just opposite to this, opposite to this toxicity is called placidity. So what happens is that uh, this case usually takes place in the uh, in the uh, solution in the solution which is hypotonic actually before when the water molecules will move from outside to inside. That time usually this toxicity takes place which I told you before also. Just opposite to that, okay. This is now toxic cell, now see, is toxicity we can see there. Take this out cell, take this cell out and put in the, 
put in the container where the, the what you call your saline water is there, saline water or your sugar solution is there, sugar solution, whatever it is. So sugar solution is there. Okay, is there saline water or your sugar solution is there? Which means saline water or sugar solution means this is concentrated see here. Sugar is more out here and the salt is also more out here. So that time, that time when you take this out, when you take this cell out and put it here, now dip this cell out here, bring this out here. Bring this cell out here in this cell, dip it out here. In the you know, in the solution which is little bit concentrated, let's see. Okay, concentrated saline soil or you know, sugar solution, you dip the same cell for some time. What happens is that since here the the water molecules are less water molecules are less because it is concentrated solution and uh, if the water molecules are more out here the water molecules are less since the water molecules are less out here what happens is that water molecules from here start flowing here water molecules from the from the cell start flowing into the water flowing into this you know is your solution there 